Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode of the Murphy Street Collector. I'm your host, Kavika Smith, and here on Murphy Street we have one saying. Shoes and slippers at the door, come inside, and let's talk story. Before we get started, I want to thank Warrior Printing's Caleb Spencer for making our shirts, these Murphy Street Collector shirts. If you have any printing needs, make sure you check them out. We'll be checking out Collector's Megalopolis today, see what we found there, as well as checking out some of my sneakers that makes me a sneakerhead. Now, to start today's episode, we're going to head down to From the Heart Hawaii, where I'm going to meet Bronson, and we'll talk about buying collectibles off of the third-party market. <laughs> All right, we are here at From the Heart Hawaii. I'm here with my guy Bronson, and we're going to talk to you guys about buying from third party sources, sources such as eBay, Mercari, uh, Wish App, and of course, Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp. Have you purchased from any of those other outlets? I have. Which one of those are your favorites? Um, right now, it would be Mercari. Mercari, you can pretty much search anything. Um, it's also geared more towards us like sure like, you know if you buy from gamestop.com or big bad toy store or empire toy shops if you buy from those people you don't have to worry about bootleg stuff now buying from the third party sources you have to worry about opening yourself up to that yeah have you had any experience with that yeah uh just recently i have so oh yes tell us about <laughs> that well um that's kind of what happens when you take a gamble on these type of things when you order through um you know, people online, you never know what you're going to get. Right, that's kind of the price you pay for the disparity in dollars, right? Sometimes what you see in the pictures might not always be what you get in person, so... Even though it is bootleg, there's still some beauty and some value in it, right? <laughs> and some humor. And some, yeah, well, and I think I think that's the beauty and the value in it. But please, tell us about this experience that you got. Um, we actually have it here laid out. What is it? What, what happened? Tell us about your deal. It was a Pokemon bundle. So what you see here is pretty much my entire haul yes for 20 bucks I, and I, I have to admit like i this is an impressive haul yeah. 20 dollars. yeah but like you said you you always take that risk and that mm -hmm. gamble especially so all of this was 20 bucks right so i took that risk of hitting that person up and um you know taking a chance of reaching out to them and finding out if this was available did it go did it go smooth first of all because there are some horror stories it was a guy who posted it and then when i messaged this person he tells me to go um, he gives me a number to another person <laughs> and then when I called this person it was a woman so I uh, arranged to meet up at nine o'clock in the evening in the, yes I get to the address I'm calling no answer so I was like okay she ghosted you this, yeah now this is what happens on third party in meetups yes. too good to be true it's too good to be yeah. true so they probably just flaked out on me but so okay so how did it happen that you actually met up and got this so uh, when I got home then she texted me back it was already like 11 at night and she's like hey I'm so sorry my phone was dead we're, at, we're out at dinner um, if you want we can uh, arrange a meetup for tomorrow morning so I met up with her the following day and that's what happened. And it happened and you got that, you magically got your $20 bundle. Bottom line, are you happy with your $20 purchase? I am, yes. Give us three of your top, your top three. Just your top three, point them out. Uh, top three, uh, uh, number one would have to be this Charizard that I found. Um, that was the thing that really caught my eye. This guy? Yeah. Okay. It's made in 2000 and it's um, that classic Charizard look. Um, with that classic fire. Charizard smell. Secondly would probably be, oh here, Ash Ketchum. Ash Ketchum. Now this figure was like a big part of my childhood. So. It's dope, I love it. I absolutely that, love it. And no, that's not a bootleg. This is not a bootleg. Real one, okay. son. And the last of my favorites, it's probably too small to show you folks, but this here. Itty bitty living itty space. Itty bitty Bulbasaur. I don't know if y'all can see that, but. Yeah. Now talking about the calamities of this third party purchasing, um, some of these are not official and authentic. Right. How can we tell? And do you have any like direct comparisons that we can tell? Because yeah, they all look like fantastic so, Pokemon toys to me. So right here with Articuno, this is the real one. I love the coloring on this the guy. Fake one here. Oh, oh. This is like this is like Night the Instagram, day. and then this is real Insta Instagram versus reality. <laughs> That's what's happening here. And here's the real Gyarados and the fake one. Wow. 
how would someone that's not trained be able to tell? Well, for Pokemon merchandise, like the figurines, yeah. um, they were made by Tomi, which is a Japanese toy company. Sure. Um, so you'll notice like in the back, it'll have the stamps here. It'll have a uh, copyright Nintendo. And sure. Let's say Tomi. So okay. That's one way you can um, distinguish. What do, one of, what do one of these guys have on the back? China. <laughs> made, it does say made in China. Look at this. Dragonite, look at this tail. I don't yeah, think Dragonite's they... Dragonite's not brown. Well, you, <laughs> I mean, I guess depending on where he flew into, right? Or like so. this Gengar, for instance, it's just a total... It's got a little thing Gengar. on his head, too. What else is fake here? Um, so we have some bootleg Pokemon cards. Oh, yes. So these are quite hilarious. Yeah, yeah, and we want to know about this because cards are such a big phenomenon right now. Right. And this is where the value of today's collector really lies. So we have a uh, Nine Tails. Nine Tails. Um, you can tell this is a knockoff only because it uh, only has eight uh, tails. Pre-evolution is a Metapod, and Metapod does not evolve into a nine tails. So, and it's a grass type. Nine tails is clearly not a, a grass type. So, no, we pass on grass. And then he has like a thousand HP, and yeah, and so many like subtle yet not subtle things right. about it right. that make it a absolute masterpiece of a bootleg. What would be a cautionary tale for you telling somebody who is kind of new to purchasing from uh, offer up from Facebook Marketplace? Let's say somebody else was to get into this $20 deal. Uh, what I will say is, um, you know, take your chance. You never know what you'll get. Um, like I said, $20 for all of this, I thought was a good deal. Do you still think it's a good deal? I still think it's a good mm -hmm. deal. There's some figures here that are actually probably worth more than the haul itself. All right. Well, thank you so much, yeah, Bronson. Of course. Now stick around because after the break, we will be going to the Collector's Megalopolis, the first collector show we had right out of COVID. So stick around. We'll be right back. With one of Hawaii's largest selections of Funko Pops in the islands, From the Heart Hawaii is your one-stop shop for all your collector needs. They carry one of the island's most robust selections of designer toys from all around the world. You like cards? They got that too. Sports cards, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! The list goes on and on. They even have graded cards. So come visit From the Heart at the City Square Shopping Center and find what you've been looking for. From the Heart, Hawaii. Welcome back to the Murphy Street Collector. Now, as promised, we're going over to Pro Ridge for Collectors Megalopolis. What I want to know is how alive and healthy is our collector community, especially coming off of the pandemic. This is our first big event from it. So I want to stop and talk to some of the vendors and also check out some of the people there and maybe have a good time while we do it. Let's go. Collector Megalopolis. This will go down in history as the first big all collectors event on the heels of the pandemic. The community was welcome to come out in mass to engage their fervor, whatever it may be, which led me to ask, who would seek out such an ambitious undertaking? I mean, you're welcoming all collectors. That's a lot of people. Sure, the normal folks will be out for the cards and the Pokemon and Star Wars and Hot Wheels. But what about the one-offs? Well, they had stuff for them too. Let's check it out. Aloha, I'm Charles Itliong owner of the collectible store known as High Collector, and I'm also the organizer for this show here, the Collector Megalopolis. Today's turnout was very good. We had a very good response. Now, High Collector, is that a brick and mortar shop for you? That is correct. We actually specialize in all vintage um, types of collectibles. We are talking um, comic books, we're talking cards, uh, we're talking action figures. What is it that you collect? Well, Actually, I collected comic books. That's how I actually started. But after that, I mean, I kind of branched out to action figures, cards, uh, Transformers, Hot Wheels, you know. I'm a completionist, that's what people tell me. Do you have anything uh, that you're planning in the future? The Pop Culture Expo basically is in its third year. The difference between the Pop Culture Expo and the Collector Megalopolis is that the Collector Megalopolis specializes for all collectible things. But the two differences is that we try to um, do a mini con with the Pop Culture Expo. And we, over here at the collector, we try to get all the types of generis for the collectors. This show also featured artists like my man, Andy Lee. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Oh, wow. Thank you. Did you do this? 
Awesome. I might not ever use this. Thank you. Oh, um, I started professionally um, after I got out of college in 96, about 30 years maybe. What has been your biggest accomplishment as an artist? Getting my dad to think art is okay in my Chinese family. <laughs> Besides that, um, just being accepted in, the, in a style that is my own. So I think any artist wants that. It's a simple, honest truth of, of most artists. Well, my favorite is just like seeing people get amazed at what I render of their favorite character. So my favorite now is when I can get a person really amped about their something. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, exactly. Like each one gets taken home with me, that feeling, right? Do you collect anything? Well, I used to, but then I gave it all away to my girlfriend's uh, brother, like Frank Miller things. That pretty much, uh, you know, all the old ones, Snake Eyes, uh, the silent issue of G.I. Joe, um, you know, the Wolverine for Frank Miller, Dark Knight. But I was never a good collector. I, I break all my toys. Okay, so maybe collecting isn't for everyone. But let's talk to Tucker Togioi, a longtime collector and vendor, on his thoughts at the event. Uh, it was such a great crowd. We had so many people, you know, jamming and whew, good, good day. What is your forte? Yeah, I would say my forte is Hot Wheels. Never at a shop, but always collected comics, sports cards, action figures. You no? Know? Yes, I, I'm a financial advisor. So I tell all my clients, I really enjoy working with you guys. This stuff I love. Would you give the advice for people to take up collecting? Yeah, get what you like, but it's great friends and everything. Would you say that we have a good and healthy collector community? Very healthy. Uh, people help each other out, people give tips, uh, share great deals. You know, it, it's a great community. I, I love Godzilla's, uh, Hot Wheels, uh, <laughs> that's my main thing. What drives you to collect something? Some things are nostalgia. Yeah, it just brings back your childhood and uh, a simpler, uh, seems like a sweeter time, you know? Ah, sweeter time indeed. Now with all the vendors and great stuff, it's easy to get lost, but we'd be missing out on the full experience if we didn't meet more new people. So how's about we go out and do that? Michael Cannon, Western style comic art is my background, but I have to take you know shots of other stuff, Totoro and anything. But I, yeah, I'll try to draw anything at least once. If I'm on social media anywhere, it's at Art Del Dawn. I'm a co-founder of Comic Jam Hawaii, which is a local drawing group. We meet here at the mall the first and third Sundays of each month. Any type of collector fandom that you collect? I have about 5,000 comic books. Does I that count? That yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that counts, yeah. I, I didn't set out to collect them. I, I bought them to read. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been good. Um, I know you spoke to John earlier, like all his fans came out, and I don't really have fans, but I still did pretty well. <laughs> The John he mentioned was John Murakami, a highly respected artist, well known for the Calabash and Generation Gap pieces and is also the brains behind some of my favorite special occasion cards of the same style. But there's also some new designers here, so we stop and talk to Kaniala, or maybe better known as Elusive Arts. Uh, my specialty is Peking style anime stickers, uh, so it looks like it's peeking out of like your car or you can put it on like a hydro flask or something. I actually got started uh, about five years ago and a friend asked me to design something for her, a little Pikachu that she wanted to put on a car. And from there it just kind of blew up. The turnout was really good. Um, there was a lot of people, especially you know we haven't had an event in a while. So it was great to see a lot of familiar faces. What do you collect? Um, I collect a lot of Funko Pops, Pokemon cards, and designer toys like Quick, Slab Slab, Hot Actor, Seven Sketchy, Sad Panda, you know, a lot of those kind of things. Anything you want to say to your fans before we go? Uh, thank you guys so much for the support. I would not be anywhere without you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Speaking of Seven Sketches, again, one of the cool things that can happen at these kinds of events. So as we start to wrap up the day, we stop for a couple more convos with some well-known vendors. Taiga Newman. What can you tell us about the collective community in Hawaii? Um, it's good. Everybody's pretty fair, and everybody tries to share and help out each other as much as they can. I think Amazing Comic Con, I do the best, and here would be second, I guess. What do you collect? What is your advice? Everything I have here. Pretty much, except for the fungal pops, I have open in bins at home <laughs> for myself. <laughs> Almost one of everything. You heard it from the man himself, and as you can see, most vendors are collectors too. I wonder if Glenn Kanashiro from All Kinds Stuff 808 is as well. What do you specialize in? Uh, Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. 
but you, yeah. the shop sells a ton of other things. Yeah, toys, uh, Marvel Legends, uh, Star Wars toys, Funkos, uh, Hot Wheels. Yes. What do you collect? Now I'm starting to collect the Mystery Machines. Definitely the Pokemon boom has got me more excited for cards again. I think it's just a fun time to be a collector right now, honestly. Uh, if there's anything I personally try to keep for myself, uh, right now it's a lot of Power Ranger things. 9.8 signed uh, Jason David Frank, 1 in 100, so I think this is, like this book right here is like kind of like kickstarted everything for collecting. Well, collecting has been, um, it's been stronger now. My notice, it started off with the, uh, with the Marvel movies and that just, you know, kind of kicked off everything else. And then I guess every little thing after that, once you got the collectors involved, I noticed even like Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels exploded. Yeah, it's been strong. I'm considered the young blood in the community. Everyone calls me the kid. Just like everyone else here at the show, when it comes down to it, uh, if you're passionate about what you love and what you do, you'll, you'll be willing to pay any price for it. Well, there you have it. Collectors Megalopolis was fantastic, nostalgia filled, a great day for everyone. Now stay tuned, because after the break, we'll be checking out some of my personal collection of sneakers that makes me a sneakerhead on the Murphy Street Collector. We can fly where you want to. We can leave your house behind. But if your friends don't mask, and why don't they mask? Well, they won't fly this airline. You can fly if you want to, because we do safety right. We have air that's clean and disinfectant machines zapping germs like an arcade space fight. And we dance to the, the dance, do the, the dance, dance, have the filters cleaning commence. Alaska Safety Dance. Alaska Safety Dance. Today we are in From the Heart Hawaii talking about a different type of collecting. Now sneakerheads are people that have a affinity, a love if you will, for shoes, myself included. So. I thought I'd take you through a box, starting with this guy right here. Now this is the Air Jordan 34. This colorway, I believe, is detailed as Jordan 34 Black Cat. If not for the invention of this flight plate, Jordan brand was considering maybe just going to straight lifestyle and doing only retro type shoes. So as you can see, this one here has a mesh upper, very lightweight, really helped to reinvigorate the Jordan as a performance shoe. So once again, the Jordan 34 Black Cats. Uh, the next shoe that we have will be this guy right here. But this is the Jordan All-Star 35s. So this was actually the All-Star game release. Very classic Jordan-esque type of style and colorway. The only thing that I see about this for me that uh, I maybe would not use this as a performance shoe, would definitely use this to rock though, because I love the colorways, is the fact that it's made of what looks to be Nubuck or even suede. This right here, the Jordan 35, this one again, the All-Star Edition. Our next one will be this guy here. So this is the Jordan Max 200 BBS. Now Jordan has been dabbling in different types of shoes for lifestyle. Street name for this colorway is Bayou Boys. What I love most about this if I'm kicking it in a shoe, I love the, the black with the gum rubber bottom looks. Now the back of it, you might be familiar if you are a sneakerhead, the back of it is actually very familiar because this does look like an Air Max 90. Very beautiful shoe. Something that I think looks very comfortable, would go really well with khaki. Obviously not a performance shoe. Nonetheless, that is the Jordan Max 200 BBS. All right, so three shoes in. Let's see what the next one is. Ooh, an absolutely radiant colorway at an older silhouette. The original Air Jordan 5 was released back in 1990. This here gives you the complete red. It's something a little more trendy, more modern. Some of the classic things, once again, reflective tongue, lace lock, Jordan brand, the numbering logo on the side. But this one is a beautiful shoe to have in hand, and I can't wait to see where I rock it and what I rock it with. All right, I'm gonna say that we're halfway through, so let's see what we got next. Ah, yes. Now, this one is out of Wifey's collection. And for the ladies, Nike brand has a J Japan collab with a company called Sakai. And this is a take on the Nike Waffle Racer with an elongated wing in the midsole. And that is what you see here with this very punctuated, accented middle look here. So it's just a white, white. Um, it's a beautiful shoe, actually. 
I love the hits of gold on the end of the laces here, but very feminine features on this shoe. The fat ribbon lace is a very good touch for the ladies. You love the um, embossed double swoosh on the side. And also on the back side, it does say Nike Sakai. I can tell you that Sakai's go hard on the resale market. Ah, all right. And this would be the Jordan 3. So the colorway for this is on the box known as Mid Navy and White, but the street name for this shoe is the Jordan 3 Georgetown. This is what actually is the calling kind of trademark other than the elephant print. It's the soft leather that came with the Jordan 3. That's, that's what made it a very popular shoe. Retail on this is 190, although I'm pretty sure you could get a little more for that now on GOAT or StockX if you're a reseller. Next shoe. So for you Jordan heads, you sneaker heads, you already know what's in this box. When you see a box like this, it is nine times out of 10 going to be an Air Jordan 1, which this is. Now this colorway right here is called the Dark Mocha. This is a pretty popular colorway because of its similarity to the Travis Scott. The main difference between this and the Travis Scott is the reverse swoosh, but people will rock a pink lace with this just to emulate or to replicate the Travis Scott shoe. And you can probably bet that I will go get a pink lace swap to go with this and maybe I can rock it with my Nezuko shirt. Again, a poncho, a bottle stick. Up next. So this one is the Jordan High University Blue. It's basically for you North Carolina fans. Nonetheless, the Air Jordan one is one of those iconic classic models. Again, I just showed you the mocha, the dark mochas. This right here is the University Blue. This is kind of new age in the fact that it does also have a black swoosh and black accent. So we're down to our last shoe. So we are saving the best for last. And for this, this might be a new box. These are a limited run, individually numbered to 12,000. This one is called the Trophy Room Ones. On the top, I got two lace swaps. This shoe came out on February 10th of this year to commemorate Michael Jordan's rookie year All-Star Game. So you'll see that it says rumor has it on the inside. And the reason that is, is because in the 1985 All-Star Game, rumor has it that some of the older veterans in the league got together to ice Michael Jordan out of the game. So when you look at this shoe, you will see that it actually looks like it's encased in ice. Very tough to find, especially in a size 15, especially in Hawaii. Beautiful shoe, probably one of my favorite in the collection. It's up to you as far as how you choose to rock your collection. Uh, I like to do mine at every, any type of meaningful event, I will wear mine. Whether any, any Jordan, because to me, if you're going to be elite, you should be in Jordans. And so that is where you should wear your things. So this was Murphy Street Kicks on the Murphy Street Collector. We look forward to doing another kick section with you, hopefully in the near future. Stay tuned. Aloha everybody, it's Hi'ilani with your fashion statement. And ladies, this one's for us. What if we want to change out of our heels and wedges? Not to worry, I'm about to show you some of my cheats. So for something with a low profile, I always suggest a tennis shoe look. You can never go wrong with white, but you always want to make sure that the accent colors are bright and vibrant. Some of us like animal prints. Many different shoe companies explore various fabrics, so you can easily find something like this. And personally, red always pops against any animal prints. And last but not least, sometimes we just want to shine. So whether it's high or low cuts, Jordan 11s are always sure to turn heads. So once again, this is Hi'ilani, encouraging you to make your fashion statement. At Collectors Megalopolis, we decided to give some stuff away by playing 5 second rule with questions we designed. Sounds easy enough, right? So let's meet our players and see how they did. Your name please. My name is Antonio Manuel. Uh, Janelle. Efren. Megan Wagner. Coda. Uh, Richard. My name is Mel. My name is Rebel Allen. Luis. Kahiba. Kaini Pono. From the new Space Jam. Yes. Oh my God, LeBron. LeBron James. Naga. Name three Disney Pixar movies that have sequels. Toy Story. Uh, Monsters Inc. And... Oh. Lucky for her, we give two chances. Turtle, right two, and um, Evian. Yes, name three Pokemon 
Greninja, Charizard, Infinite. Let's bring Dakota back. Bulbasaur, Squirtle. Name <laughs> three, Autobots. Autobots, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Iron Man. Doctor Strange. Oh my god. Name the three scams from Ed and Eddie that they did to earn a quarter. The uh the uh the, the jawbreaker thing uh the uh shoot the the lung uh the the pick your uh the oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> name three arcs from one piece uh Wano Kingdom Punk Hazard and oh. Uh, oh my god Name me three villains from my hero academia Go there Rocky Dumby Koga <laughs> Name the seven warlords of the sea. Um, Bo Hancock, Mihawk, and Jibbe. Oh, there you go. Name three villages. So we got the hidden hidden cloud village, hidden rain village, and hidden leaf village. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Name three members of the Jedi Council. Mace Windu, Yoda, uh, Qui Gon Jinn, where's one? Name three Disney movies. The Princess and the Frog, Finding Nemo, and Hercules. Name three NBA players from the original Space Jam. Marshall Jordan, uh, Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley. There we go, we got a winner! Right. I want to say thank you from, um, from the Hawaii and then from... And the... Thank you from the heart. Uh, Thank you from the Hawaii and Murphy Street Collective. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn, for the stickers. And um, Murphy Street Collective. Thank you from the Heart Hawaii and thank you from Murphy Street Collective. Thank you from, from the Heart Hawaii and thank you from Murphy Street. Thank you from the Heart Hawaii and Murphy Street Collectors. I'm a winner! <laughs> we want to make sure to thank our sponsors from the Heart Hawaii and Alaska Airlines. We also want to thank everybody at Collector Megalopolis that stopped by and had a good time with us. We really appreciate you and that's what this entire show is about, connecting the collector culture. So, on my table, as promised, White Vision. Amazing piece and we want to remind you to make sure that you guys catch us on Instagram at Murphy Street 808 and also on YouTube at Murphy Street Productions. And until we see you guys next time, I always want to remind you, don't forget your slippers. Aloha. Yeah.